can't begin to express how proud I am to be the son of Tom Condit. The question we all have to answer someday is not how long did we live, but rather, what did we accomplish while we were here? We celebrate my dad's life today because he chose to live a life full of purpose. He understood priorities and he understood relationships. That's why we have a gymnasium full of people here today. My mom has a picture hanging in her home that says faith, family, football, and friends. My dad held to those principles throughout his life. My dad will tell you he was blessed to have so many wonderful friends. I would tell you and many others would agree that my dad had many wonderful friends that were blessed to have him in their life. He invested himself into relationships without prejudice. He had unwavering loyalty that few people possess. You always knew you could get an honest opinion from him. He wasn't going to tell you what you wanted to hear, but rather what you needed to hear. Dad loved coaching. Coaching was his vehicle to influence lives. He absolutely loved his players and fellow coaches. His players would describe him as a tough disciplinarian that would sometimes borderline on insanity but can convince you to run through a minefield and yet the whole time know that you were loved. He was able to do this because you knew he would stand hand in hand with you along the way. You knew that nobody outworked Tom Condit. You knew that nobody outtoughed Tom Condit. And can you believe he did this without saying a foul word and preaching the love of Christ the entire time? I received a message from a friend and teammate that played for Dad. It read, Your dad saved my life. He is the reason I wanted to coach. I wanted to be him. You guys took me to church and showed me what a strong faith looks like. Thank you, Jimmy Harris, for sharing. Everyone knew that Dad was a family man. Dad thoroughly enjoyed living close to his parents, Ray and Lena Condit, and you could often find him playing dominoes at their house. He loved them dearly. He set a great example for his younger brothers and sisters. He was a faithful husband that was more in love with his wife at 63 than he was at 23. He respected and treated women the way they deserved to be respected and treated. He was living proof that the tough guy could also be a passionate husband. He was a loving father that understood very well the importance of discipline. Dad was a living resource on how to be a great man. He was fair, tough, and always loving. His six grandkids adored their pawpaw. He loved spending time with each of them and was always willing to entertain them. Finally, Dad's purpose in life was winning others to Christ. He was always involved in church. He also led several FCA groups and had just recently started our coaches outreach group in Wagner. He was an obedient servant of Jesus Christ and the way he lived his life reflected this. Nothing was above his faith. I would like to take this opportunity to speak directly to my dad. I would like everyone in this gymnasium to know just exactly how I feel. Thank you, Dad, for leaving no stone unturned. Thank you for giving Scott and I, and so many others, the blueprint on being a faithful servant of Christ, a loving husband, a committed father, and a loyal friend. Thank you for giving me the confidence to make tough decisions, basing that on what was right. Thank you, Dad, for showing us how to treat others. Thank you for being such a great leader People found it easy to follow you because you had such a positive attitude and great work ethic. I want you to know that I'll never meet another man with more toughness and discipline. The success I've had in my coaching career I owe to you. I'm living my dream doing what you taught me to do. I'm still striving to be as good as you were. I'm going to miss calling you with the reports on our team. I enjoyed it so much because boys like me like making their heroes proud. We started practice this week. I wanted to tell you how good I think our team could be, but you weren't feeling so good at the time. I'm glad now though, you'll get to see us from the best seat in the house, and I hope we make you proud. Thank you for making mom feel like the only woman on the earth. You guys had a love that few people can understand. You were her knight in shining armor, her one and only. You've done your part, now Scott and I will carry the torch. And if we get out of line, feel free to give us your classic thump on the head. I love you, Dad. If ever there was a man who represented the great state of Oklahoma, it was Tom Condit. In this state, we love great music, we're passionate about football, and we care deeply about the people around us. And our faith in God is still a big value. My dad loved so many kinds of music. If you spent time with him, you would always end up hearing him play his favorites. 
It could be something by the Eagles, Colin Ray, John Fogarty, and if it was summer, it was always Bob Marley. His passion for football took our family on an incredible adventure. It taught me and my brother so many life lessons. Dad was a winner. His teams were always competitive. If they were good, he made them great. But you can't separate his passion for football and his love for people. It was more than a game to him, and his players were influenced by his belief that he could build character first and teach football second. He was able to show them how to be a man in a society that is losing its ability to define true manhood. By example, he showed what it meant to be a committed husband and a loving father. He loved every one of his players. Even if you weren't a starter, he treated you as a contributor. He loved all of you in this room. If you look around, this room doesn't just represent people that knew Tom Condon. It represents people whose lives were affected in a positive way by him. There isn't enough time to tell the stories of how he treated everyone he knew with dignity and respect and never compromised on the values that he held. I've not told many people this, but one story defines my dad. We were in the playoffs my senior season, and we were playing Broken Bow. Now, as you know, dad had coached and won a state championship there in the 1980s. I was having a great season and had a lot to prove in the big game. Needless to say, it wasn't my best game. In fact, it was the worst I'd ever played. I had four interceptions during the previous 11 games, and I doubled that number in this one game. That's right, four interceptions in one game. We're at the end of the game, and things are already decided. I was in the huddle when Dad called a timeout. He came out on the field, and he didn't address the guys in the huddle like he normally would. He pulled me aside and simply said, Son, I'm proud of you. And that's all he said and he walked back to the sideline. The greatest thing I can say about my dad is that he was a committed follower of Jesus. When Christ came into his life, it wasn't a small change. Dad never sort of did anything. He was consumed by God's call on his life. He was tenacious about his calling to be a great husband, to be a dad who was truly present and loved his boys unconditionally. There is a legacy that will be left by him that can only be measured in heaven. If he could say anything to you today, it would be this. Believe in Jesus and let your life reflect that. He's the only one who can take an imperfect person and use them for incredible things. Love him with all your heart. Let people be your legacy, not your career. Dad, I love you. I know that I made you proud because you told me. You were everything a man could ask for in a father. You passed on so many great things to me. The greatest of which is a love for Jesus and a life that reflects His goodness. You married a great woman. You two were such an example of the vows that you took on your wedding day. I'll miss you, but I know that you're with Jesus today, and that gives me so much joy. I just think about you singing to your favorite Bob Marley song. Don't worry about a thing, because everything's going to be all right.
See?